Got another one. close to the hole. My name is Timothy Broche. I have a passion for the outdoors, family, and cooking. I embrace my primal instinct to hunt and gather. I understand how it defines me and appreciate the unparalleled food the outdoors provide. The water and woods call to me. Made it back to my burbot fishing lake. This is officially my last ice fishing trip, I promise. I know I said that on the last video, but um, we're heading into the middle of May. It looks like springtime at home. Uh, kind of weird leaving with no snow on the ground and coming up here to go go ice fishing. But um, a couple of objectives on this trip to uh, take some more meat home. And uh, oh man, those ones that I caught last time I were up here, we cooked them a couple different ways. Um, I'll start posting some of the recipes and, and videos for how to cook some of this stuff. The only thing I can say is please don't boil them. Like, I know a lot of people like it that way, but they, it's some of the most scrumptious meat that you're gonna find in freshwater fish anywhere. So I'll be posting some recipes, so don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss those. Um, my second objective on this trip, after I hike the kilometer and a half out to that point where we were last time with a ridiculous amount of crap that I'm dragging by myself, is, um, I, I kind of have some contradicting theories to some of the mainstream ideas on how burbot behave, how to get them to bite and different things. So I'm going to see if I can prove it. Going to get a workout today, wow. but I'm in a t-shirt, so it's a beautiful day. Wow. Well, this isn't going as planned. The snow has a... Uh, a layer of ice under it with about six inches of slush and at first I was able to stay up on top of it but now I'm falling through and with this can you believe how much crap I have with this there's no way I'm gonna be able to get out there and if I do I need to try to get back across here around midnight so um, we're gonna improvise and we're gonna go check out uh, this little rocky point I got to this other kind of point back here I was looking at and uh, it looks good on the depth chart. <coughs> it also looks good on the shoreline. Um, lots of rocks down off this point. So theoretically uh, there should be some should be some burbot moving through here. It's not at all what I expected. It was like minus 22 degrees up here last weekend. And that snow covered the ice. And it is just a horrible sloppy mess under the snow. What a mess. <clears throat> well, I got something anyways. Not what I was expecting, but nice nice fat rainbow I'll take some meat home if these guys are up in here there must be something for them to feed on I would expect the the ling cod to be moving up in here soon so just getting up and getting ready starting to get everything loaded up lunch and obviously my charging station and getting everything ready to go. I did get one little lane. Well, it's almost 11 o'clock. I finally got one. Um, and I got that one rainbow yesterday. So very slow night. I've got two more nights. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is uh, go back to the spot where Ron and I had some success uh, mid-February. And try there tonight and depending on how that goes I'll make a decision on what I do tomorrow
So we found the right depth. We're gonna be fishing in about 9.2 meters of water, which is right around 32, 33 feet straight off this point, which is really close to where Ron and I were fishing up here mid-February. So I got the tent all laid down, got it positioned. Now I'm just kicking a little bit of snow up on here just to insulate the bottom. Much nicer over here today. It looks like the wind blew some of the snow off, so <clears throat> uh, I'm on ice, not walking on slush today. So much nicer. The inside of the tent is actually functional too. It's not a big old sloppy mess today. Yay! Again, we just need some fish now. Everything's kind of out of the way. <clears throat> it's a way better configuration than I had before. And I moved the fish finder over so I don't have any holes close to where I'm sitting. So not as much of a risk of dropping my phone or some other important piece of equipment to the bottom of this freaking lake. So now it's an amazing day. Um, so now I'm just going to drill a few more holes. I've got a line of holes back to the shore here. So I'm just going to move over, drill, I don't know, maybe one, another set of holes back over this way about somewhere between here and halfway to that point. So we'll try a little bit of hole hopping again tonight and see if we can learn anything. Got something good here. Just smashed it. I was getting ready to give up. That's a female. Wow. Yay. That's weird. There's nothing been on my fish finder at all. Let's get a weight on this girl. Bigger than I thought. Almost five pounds. Got another one. close to the hole. We lost a big one last trip. Just ripping them right up. Oh no! <sighs> got another one. Hopefully I can get this one up. Felt like I gotta get it set. We cannot lose another one. one but we're gonna keep it we're running out of time on this trip and we need all the meat we can get what do I do with my pliers Whew. just finished up packing up my really ridiculous amount of stuff for tonight got some blood on the ice again uh, it's 11 30 
So we got to go way over there, just to the left of those last lights. Whew, here we go. Well, today's the day. Last ice fishing trip of the year, last day for bourbon fishing. I need to make a choice. I'm just getting ready to head to the lake. I've got three different options. I can fish in the exact same place I was fishing last night, or I can move down the shoreline to uh, the next very pronounced point. Or I can just move in to shallower water in around uh, three to four meters where I was getting all the bites uh, around dusk last night. One of my objectives is to learn more about fishing for burbot. So going to the exact same place and doing the exact same thing likely would produce some results and have some success, which is my primary motivator. However, I'm not going to learn anything more than I do than I already know. Looking at the depth chart to around the, the point just up further that I'm considering going, the one thing I don't like about that is that the, there's no place where the water drops sharply off into deeper water, which in all the research I've done and, and listening to everybody who has advice on how to pick spots for burbot, it's one of the things that's suggested and with the pronounced points that I've been fishing on before are very consistent that it drops off very sharply to anywhere from 70 to 90 feet of water. So my fear is, is that if I go to that next point, because it only drops down to about 30 feet of water and it's just a big open flat in there, that as bright as it's been and as light sensitive as burbot are, that there's not going to be a lot of them moving around in there. Um, I know that there's bead fish and shallower uh, in the, off the point I was fishing last night and there was a lot of fish moving around in that 10 feet of water. So I'm going to jump in the truck and just kind of uh, think about this on the way out there and, and where's going to be the smartest thing to go where I'm likely going to catch some fish and learn a little bit more about burbot behavior and hopefully take, you know, I'm still shooting for a limit in one day. and. Uh, 200 nights the best that I've done so far so um, there's some room for growth here but I'm just going to take a hard think on this and need to make a decision by the time I get to the lake so let's get that in. Well I just got all set up in the shallower spot here where I was fishing last night so right out there that's where we where I got a couple last night so we're all set up here a little bit a lot closer in shore. So I was just taking a look at the bottom. It looks good, I guess. Um, weather is way different today. So we'll see if this little pressure system moving through, if that's gonna make too much difference. But still early, it's about 3.30. So I'm just gonna, I got get all, got all my stuff all set up. So I'm just gonna fish through some holes that I punched back in the shallower water. See if there's anything I looked on the water camera. I don't see anything moving around over that way, but maybe we can find something here. But we're here and I'm done setting up camp, so time to fish. The heck? Whoa! <laughs> keeping that one. I'm keeping that one. That's a beauty. All right. About a pound and a half, eh, maybe a pound. Oh, good guess. Pounder. I will bonk him and get him cleaned and degilled. Tried this with the burbot last night that actually worked pretty good, although it's way tougher. There we go. Beauty. That one pound trout would be food for a seven pound burbot for sure. What they can swallow is crazy. 
Whoa, I don't know what the heck we got here. Oh, pound and a half or that is a beauty. Wow. They're getting bigger. That's what we want. Let's mark this hole. We got what do we got here? Oh, it's that same little 10 inch we cut earlier. Ow. Hey, easy. I'm here to help. We need you in there for burpet food. Oh man. This little feisty rainbow. We're we gonna turn that guy back to you. Well, this I didn't expect. What do we got here? A sucker. This, wow. This is quite the spot here. Get this. Man, I haven't seen one of these for a long time. I just had, there he is. Had him grab it on the way down. Oh, hands. Wow. Wow. Oh man, look how dark that one is. Oh, that's not a... That's not a rainbow. That's a Mac. That's a Laker. And I'm gonna put this guy back. Wow, that's three species here so far. Another pounder. I'm keeping this one too. Take some meat home tonight, one way or another. So, a couple tips, a couple things I learned uh, fishing on this lake that uh, definitely implement next year. The first thing is uh, location. So, on this lake, I would definitely look for those pronounced points that have drop offs, fairly sharp drop offs that go down to. Uh, 20, 25, 30 meters of water uh, up to the shallow. I would fish right out on the edge of the point in about nine to 10 meters. Um, the other places I tried in shallower, in between, um, less pronounced points were not productive. A uh, sifter ice fishing pole is gonna be critical. You really need to get a good hook set on those lane caught and you get a seven to 12 pounder. The biggest one I caught was on the last trip was seven pounds and it, even that medium heavy um, ugly stick that I have really, it put a lot of stress on there. With line, I started using the 10 pound braid uh, ice fishing line. It's absolutely amazing. It doesn't freeze up in the reels or in the eyes and it doesn't stretch. If you're fishing in 30, 35 feet of water, those link caught are heavy and they're super strong. So you, you try to get a lighter pole with monofilament that stretches and you're just not gonna get the kind of hook set that you need to get those fish up through the, the ice. Uh, regarding hooks, I would continue using the, what I would refer to as kind of a geometric iridescent um, type of pattern on these spoons. Uh, I did get uh, the fish that I caught last time uh, on the first trip in February were on jigs. However, so here's a closer look at the, the rig that Ron was running last night. So this is just a, you can see what it is here. And he added this little flasher up at the top. But the business side of this is quite interesting. Um, Ron had, so he was fishing about 8 to 12 inches off the bottom. With that, with no glow, and outfished me about 2 to 1 last night. As far as other gear goes, uh, definitely need to have high top waterproof boots and ice cleats. Uh, the first trip we were here, everything was super icy. We had a hill to climb up. Um, you know, Ron didn't have any ice cleats on that trip and he, and he slipped a couple times. 
it just makes it so much easier. And this time, the first day where I was fishing, I was, you know, up over my ankles in slush and almost up to the top of my boots by the time we got through the snow and the slush. So, you know, if I hadn't had those boots or they hadn't been waterproof, I wouldn't have been able to fish. Um, ice fishing tent and a heater, uh, you know, pretty critical for this kind of fishing. Um, you know, going out and thinking that you're going to get these in, in a couple hours in the evening is not very realistic you know you you really need to look at fishing probably six seven hours from you know they're crepuscular and, and nocturnal so you're fishing from an hour hour and a half before light to you know we were fishing until i was fishing until 11 11 30 at night um you know as far as how i was fishing uh again looking at the results that we had from from the first trip and this trip uh banging the the jig the glow jig off the bottom really didn't give the kind of results in this lake anyways that i was expecting or what i heard from a lot of other people what i read what i've seen from guys in the states um you know i would argue that um these fish are are not blind that they can see i would agree that they're very light sensitive but one of the things about that, just to prove my point, if you watch a lot of the videos that these guys are getting underwater footage from these link cods swimming around, where there's tons and tons of these things in the lakes down south in the States, um, you know, it's funny to me that they're like, oh, the fish are blind, but they come up and check out the camera and the camera is off the bottom. It's not got any scent on it. It's not glowing. They ha don't have the lights on. It's during the day. You know, and these fish are coming up and checking it out. So, are they blind? Or they really can't see very far? I don't think so. You know, Ron doubled my success in the first trip. You know, how we had the most success in the two trips that I've been up here was exactly the same way that I fished for trout. Drop it all the way down to the bottom, bring it up about eight to 10 inches off the bottom. Um, you know, shake it around a little bit, jig it up, get their attention. And with that iridescent green, especially, I think it reflects through the water and it looks like fish scales and they can see it. You know, if you're banging something right on the bottom, they can't see it. I do agree with that. But if you look at their, their structure, their heads, their eyes are almost right up on top of their head. So, you know, they almost have to be under something to be able to see it. And they stay right close, you know, hover right off the bottom about three or four inches. So if you've got something right down on the bottom, and I'm not saying it's not a, a strategy because a lot of people catch them this way, but I wouldn't do that. I would keep it up off the bottom about eight to 10 inches, jig it, move it around, lift it way up, drop it down and get their attention. Um, they can come in from underneath and get it. They're predator fish, they're ambush fish. That's what they do. They cruise around the bottom and look for things above them. Anyways, just a little bit on what I kind of learned fishing for these things and how I would fish for them, what I would use, um, you know, what time of day, all those kind of things. So I'm just gonna need to get my truck loaded and get on the road and head home, get these fish cleaned up. But good trip, going home with some meat and I learned a lot. So hope this helps.